Good morning everyone. We have touched down in Kyoto. Our hotel is called Tavinos Hotel and it is um, more on the cheap side than the other two hotels we stayed in until now but it is very cute. It has a lot of like comic themed um, stuff here like the walls are comic themed, the blinds are comic themed, the entrance like everything. It's very cute. It also has great storage. It doesn't have a bathtub and it's a little more like you can feel the bedding is like a little cheaper and there's no window there's only like i mean there's a window but you cannot see outside and there's not so much light coming in here but um i think it's pretty cute for the price so pretty happy with that um, i'm gonna get ready now and we're gonna leave so i'll see you at the cafe When we stepped outside of the hotel in Kyoto, there were some pretty big differences to Tokyo and Osaka, which we noticed right away. First of all, Kyoto seemed smaller and much more village-like than Tokyo. There were small houses all along the streets and a lot of small temples scattered around. We also noticed that Kyoto was much more touristy than anywhere we'd been before on our trip. Nevertheless, we were super excited to go get exploring. First we went to Kumono Cha Cafe to get some coffee and matcha and of course we couldn't resist getting some <laughs> all of their cute desserts too. And I really admire the Japanese attention to detail and quality and the amount of work and attention to detail the Japanese people put into everything even such a small dessert and this really seems to be something you can rarely find anywhere around the rest of the world and it really amazed me again and again throughout our whole japan trip taken a taxi to Arashiyama because we're going to a temple a little bit outside. You cannot reach it by train so good except if you hike up like the mountain for one hour and the temple closes at 4 30 so we decided to get a taxi. It should be around like 30 euros from the city center and wow it looks so cool outside. I'm already excited to see the temple. I was pretty excited to go to this temple because I'd seen some pretty cute pictures, but when I heard the story, it got me even more hooked. The Otagi Nembutsuji temple features over 1,200 rakan statues in the middle of a beautiful forest and the statues represent Buddhist monks or followers of Buddha and they were created by everyday people who made a pilgrimage to the temple to work on the statues under the guidance of Kochu Nishimura and Kochu Nichimura was a Buddhist statue sculptor and a monk himself. He um, worked with the people on all of these statues and even until today the Nishimura family continues to explore new ways to celebrate the Buddhist message through new ways like music, photography or video and we really really loved this temple. It was my favorite temple of the whole trip and I especially loved the message and like the mixture of religion and art and of course that you get look at all of these cute little unique statues. I think that was my favorite 
temple until now and it was really nice and it's really calming like the bird noises and the water noise and everything it was so nice <sighs> such a peaceful idyllic like place and now we're walking down the road to the bamboo forest and let's see how crowded it is there I just wanted to say that um, I read everywhere it's super hard to get to the temple because there's a hike and let me just show you the way like we're walking here it is like a little bit uphill but not really and it is breathtakingly beautiful here and super nice wait there's a car coming Need to go here no? and it is like breathtakingly beautiful here and so nice and there's no people so if you want to come to the temple I would actually recommend not getting a taxi but walk here oh, I love it so cute On our way back to the train station, we pass along the Arashiyama bamboo forest, which is probably one of the most famous attractions in Kyoto. And to be honest with you, I was not really impressed. The bamboo forest was just a really short walk um, through the bamboo and it was super super crowded and overall i think if you don't really want to go there, I would advise you to maybe skip it. On our second day in Kyoto, we decided to do a day trip to Nara because it's only like about one hour away with the train and we also decided to rent some kimonos and I'm so happy we decided to do that despite having some worries about people calling out on us for cultural appropriation or being too touristy because we had a really good experience with this. The boyfriend wore a more simple dark blue kimono and I wore a cute purple one with flowers and I also got my hair done and added some extra accessories like a second obi belt and a cute pearl belt and they also give you shoes and socks and a bag so you literally don't need to bring anything. I have to say though that there weren't so many options for me to choose from because I am quite tall and I even had to wear a little 
lace underskirt to make the kimono longer but I'm really happy with the price too we paid about 30 euros for the boyfriend and 40 for mine because of all the accessories and the hairdo but we were able to wear the kimono for the whole day and I personally think it's a really good price Since Nara was Japan's first permanent capital, it has a lot of temples and shrines to visit like the Kufukuji temple which has the second tallest pagoda in all of Japan or the Kasuga Taisha shrine which is super stunning and also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And if you're looking confused enough like the boyfriend and me did, there are some free guides who will explain to you some things like the Two to one rule or like general etiquette at shrines and also some stuff about the pagoda for example and if you don't know about the two to one rule i suggest you have a google search right now and inform yourself a little bit about the shrine etiquettes before coming to japan What the Nara of today is probably most known for though are the human-friendly deer who stroll around the whole city freely. You can feed them with crackers that you can buy all over the city for a few yen and they will even bow to you. You should definitely follow the rules when feeding the deers though, like show both of your hands when they are empty and you don't have any more crackers or they will follow you or bite you or even do some other stupid stuff and yeah just be safe and follow the rules Since the boyfriend and I were quite hungry after all of the walking, we decided to pay a visit to the famous mochi shop called Nakatanidu, which is known for the dramatic mochi pounding process and their yomogi mochi, which are made from a Japanese wild plant, also known as magwar, and they were really delicious. Also, I found out that there's even a mochi pounding high speed championship in Japan. Can you believe that? <laughs> Well, anyways, moving on to the real food. Nara is known for their kaki no sushi. Yes, that's sushi with a Z. Which is pressed sushi wrapped in persimmon leaves and it's really delicious. I believe the lady told us that in earlier times this was done to transport the sushi to areas without direct accessibility to the ocean and to protect the fish from bacteria. Of course, after the sushi, we also had some cake and ice cream, and then we went home. <laughs> Go!
Good morning everyone. So yesterday after Nara we just went and got ramen. I forgot my camera and then <laughs> we went to bed and now we just woke up and we had some um, lunch and it's actually super sunny and super nice. So we're gonna get some coffee and maybe ice cream and then for later we actually have no plans yet except some dinner plans. So I just wanted to talk really quickly about the kimono experience we had because I was a little scared to be honest that um, people would not like it and that was like inappropriate but everyone was super nice, the Japanese um, people, they really liked it, they complimented us a lot on the streets. Um, even though, <laughs> even if they couldn't speak English, they still like gave us compliments and it was super cute. And I think the tourists also liked it. Like at least they took like photos of us. And um, there were actually two street photographers who stopped us and took some pictures of us. And let's see if they're gonna send them to me or not. <laughs> I uh, gave them my Instagram and my email, but. Um, I don't know, maybe they won't send anything, but they, they took some pictures of us and also like the kimono, it was super comfortable. I really liked it, we really enjoyed it. I would really recommend you try it if you want. So, yeah. I just wanted to show my outfit real quick because I'm wearing this um, Ghani Sports Rompo. I don't know if you can see and this bag I got it like yesterday at the H&M store here but they have uh, this collaboration with Brolga I don't know Brolga and it's only available in Asia and I thought it was cute When you're in Japan, you must listen, you must have Japanese barbecue, which is called yakiniku. And it's a little bit pricey, so be prepared to splurge, but also be prepared to have some of the best meat you've ever had in your whole life. I was looking forward to this for the longest time, and it was even better than I had expected it to be. Mm -hmm. 